second time I'm using these forks, they're gonna come in handy. All right, so let me explain what I'm, or uh, let me do what I'm doing and then I'll explain why and uh, what I came up with here. That should work. It's a little tippy on there. Uh, tank's not actually that heavy. It's just very awkward to lift. So let me move this where I want to put it and I'll uh, show you guys what I'm up to. All right, so now I can get a good look at the bottom, see what the bottom looks like, make sure we don't have any issues or holes. Uh, it's scuffed up and scratched from moving it, but I don't see anything major. Forks aren't going to do any damage the way that is. Uh, just balances on here, so I'm hoping I can get the other one moved just as easily. Um, so, what I decided on after thinking about it all last night, or probably for about at least a good, I don't know, two, three minutes I gave it some thought. And uh, what I'm actually going to do is just put them outside, uh, get the nitrogen here. And probably by July, um, I'll be done. I'll be empty and uh, I can throw them on a, a flat running gear and then back them in the shed since I want to try to keep them inside to keep the sun off of them. And hopefully they'll last a heck of a lot longer than uh, these tanks do. So I think I'm going to set them both right here next to this uh, well here, this well house. Uh, it's not a functioning well, it's, it's, uh, it's abandoned. So. I want to see if I can't figure out how to set these up and uh, get the valves facing the right way. And we will uh, have everything outside then. We'll have the mess outside. I won't have any uh, uh, cal uh, yeah, calcium uh, nitrogen in the shop uh, on the floor like it was last year. And uh, I'll have a little bit more shop space and we'll figure a place. We'll put these on a running gear and back them in somewhere. We'll just have to find a place this summer, I guess. So. Let me get them moved and I'll uh, show you kind of what I, what I was thinking. And it's like 36 degrees and windy here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm uh, uh, Anyway, so I think this will work. Uh, we'll set it here. Um, the nice thing about this spot is it's pitched downhill a little bit, so that'll be nice to make sure you get it pretty well empty. Uh, let's see. This space here, I want to dig these shrubs out of here and kind of put some dirt to level this in, make it a little nicer. Um, and I don't really want to put it here. This would have been a nice spot here where this old milk house was. Uh, the reason I don't want to put it here for one is I don't want any trees to fall on it if it gets windy here. And uh, the limbs have come down here. You can see there's some here. so. Not a good spot, plus the electric line's running overhead here for the well that used to be a well. And back here we have some uh, standing water, it's like a spring. Now this will fill up so full and then once it gets to a certain height there's a drain pipe that takes it down into the soybean field there. It's not a real heavy duty spring, it just kind of fills up to a certain level and then oozes out. Uh, if we get a lot of rain, yeah, then it will uh, overtop. But I don't want to have anything like nitrogen here where this water is that it would leak or uh, get into this water and run through the pipe into the field and <laughs> basically kill off whatever's growing in the field um, if we would have a leak. And it's a little rocky here. Uh, one thing you want to make sure you do with these tanks when you do set them on the ground is make sure you don't have any jagged rocks sticking up because the minute they fill it that rock is going to poke through the bottom of your tank depending on how thick your tank is. Uh, I have seen some guys put sand down and set them on sand. I have seen that uh, fine cracker dust, they call it, the fines from the grinding stone. Um, they put that down. The reason I'm not going to do that is with uh, farm cats. It's going to be nothing but a giant outdoor litter box, and I don't want to be dealing with that all the time. So it's a nice spot, soft uh, topsoil for it to sit on. Uh, I think there's enough room for my other one and that one's probably twice as heavy as this one I don't know if it's gonna move out of the shed as easy. So we'll give it a try here I'm uh, Really hoping for warm weather and it looks like we're gonna get it uh, by Friday We're supposed to be at like 74 degrees. So I won't know how to handle myself um, still wearing the winter coat the old uh, <laughs> The old ripped and torn uh, Carhartt, but uh, be down to a t-shirt by Saturday. All right, let's see if I can't move the other one. <sighs> okay, that's heavy. That tank weighs a lot, but it's out of the corner. And I should have caught my breath before I turned the camera on. 
Oh, it's out of there. I wasn't a football player, I was a baseball pitcher. <laughs> but uh, I managed to shove this thing all the way out here and it's on the forks. So we should be able to move it. And when I get over there, I'm hoping I can turn it in the grass. There's still some nitrogen in. And the way the standpipe is in the bottom of this tank, that's all you can ever get out of it. Um, I noticed in the other tank, it's a lot lower than this one. Um, it was something, it was an oversight on my part when I got the tank here and uh, I could have easily repositioned it, <laughs> should have repositioned it, um, but I didn't. So I don't know, there's maybe 50 gallon in there, maybe not, maybe 30. But anyway, it's on the fork, so I'm going to try to get this tip back and try to get this one in place. And this one hasn't been out in the sun. The only time it was out in the sun was uh, when it was at the dealer. Um, I don't know how long these tanks sit there. I don't see a date on it. They put a serial number on. But uh, it is what it is. So this corner here, um, I had put this wood down. These are just rough cut uh, one by sixes, I think, from my local sawmill. Uh, their lumber is very cheap, especially rough cut and it's wet. It's not kiln dried, so you get what you get. But for a job like this, these were like a dollar ten a piece, maybe not even that, maybe like a dollar a piece. So I just got these and put these down over the concrete floor here because you can see why I didn't want to set that other tank here. And I didn't want to have to build another wooden deck to set it on. So I had put this down when I got my tank, uh, probably overthinking it, but I didn't want the jagged concrete underneath to poke any holes in it. And with as heavy duty as this tank is, I don't think that would have been a problem, but we did it anyway. So now we have uh, more room here in the shop. We're going to put the workbench there. We're going to put some bolt bins. We're going to put some shelves. Uh, and basically make a u-shape here. I'll put a row of shelves here So it's its own little almost like its own little area um, Not going to do any welding or grinding uh, just because all the wood on the walls There's hay and straw stuck down in from uh, when it was a uh, heifer barn um, and I got in a habit at the uh, Dealership where I worked um, We didn't weld inside very often uh, the welder was right at the door and we had a rolling cart. Well, that cart that I made, I'd roll that outside so I'd be outside and we would weld outside and grind. Well, the grinding, we had a actual grinding booth uh, to do your grinding, but I didn't like welding inside. Um, even if you have a shop that has concrete floor and concrete walls, there's still dust and debris under everything and in behind everything. And as a matter of fact, I knew a uh, dairy farm that uh, <coughs> They were welding inside. It was a concrete building and stuff, but they were welding inside and uh, they didn't uh, wait long enough to make sure everything was okay before they went to milk. And when they went to milk and they got halfway done milking and here their whole machine shed burnt down, uh, caught fire. So even in a concrete structure, um, there's still flammable items laying around. And I'm just in the habit all the time. You weld out in the great outdoors. Uh, it's not always nice. You have the sun shining in the back of your helmet a lot of times. It's windy and uh, <laughs> it is what it is, but I don't weld inside and I try not to grind inside or heat anything with a torch. I don't do any cutting inside. Um, basically you do all that outside and you have a visual cue if you uh, set your grass on fire anyway. And sometimes not with that either. So, all right, I think I caught my breath here. Uh, let's get this uh, tipped back here on these forks. I, I like these forks. These are coming in handy. I'm so glad I bought them. They were so cheap. And uh, for jobs like this, it's not it's not that heavy that it's going to bend the bucket. Um, but I know I had some people comment that I was going to tear the bucket to pieces. But I'm just kind of showing you like the other day when I was moving those tires over to the storage and now moving these tanks around. Um, this is kind of what I had in mind when I bought them for moving things around the farm here that are too awkward to, to get with a bucket and a chain. This here is actually a skid, these uh, skids here. And what I do with this, this is gonna be nice. I can put the forks on and put it on the, uh, the pallet forks and I take it up to the hose. And after I fill my sprayer and I go to the field, I put the hose in here and let this fill while I'm uh, out spraying. So this is kind of like a nurse tank. So that way when I'm done, I come back 
from spraying and usually by then this is full this is about almost 300 gallon um, I'll spray come back empty this into my sprayer put the hose back in go spray so this is always filling while I'm out in the field so now before without my loader forks to move this up to the to the hose and back or move it around the farm I was lifting it on and off the pickup by hand because I didn't have a loader um, now it's just a matter of going in with the forks and taking it up so real handy glad I bought them um, like I say this is what I bought them for little jobs like this all right enough talking let's get this moved all right so the forks just weren't long enough for this tank because it was heavier and with the nitrogen that's in it I could not get it uh, to tip back on the forks I didn't want the forks up too high so they would puncture the bottom so we not only did we use our forks that we bought and not then we used our bolt-on hooks that I uh, was glad I had ordered and trying to think ahead for some of this stuff and I love ratchet straps ratchet straps are one of the best inventions <laughs> <laughs> I've used them all the time. I swear you give me enough ratchet straps and I could probably move a building with them. So, all right. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that'll work. We'll get this over in a position. All right, I think that'll work. Got them both here. This one's sitting a little bit crooked, but uh, it's not something I'm going to worry about too much right away. Like I say, this is just a temporary spot till about July and... Uh, We'll get them back inside, but it's nice to have them uh, out of the way at least. We got them in a good location here for the guy to deliver. The mess will be outside. Uh, hopefully I didn't do any damage with the forks. I don't think so, but won't know until we go to fill them. So I'll be keeping my eye open. Um, so there they are. Uh, I can't say enough how glad I am to have a loader tractor here. Uh, I went all last year without one and uh, you, until you have one and then do, when you have one then you don't have one then you really miss it so now we got another one and uh, it's a lot better than the 8n ford loader that i had now i didn't want to say that 8n ford did a lot of work for me i mean more than it should have so and i know this is only a little tractor but uh you can do a lot of work with them um so i'm gonna say this project's pretty well done now i can get my nitrogen here whenever he comes uh Got to try to clean up this mess here a little bit. All these sticker bushes and stuff I want to cut out of here and these vines and get some nice topsoil in here to make this a little bit nicer. And maybe for next year when we put them out, I'll have more time. I can get a pad level. I got to get I got to get them set up because he could come any day. I had ordered it and he said he'd call me the day he's coming and he's been making his rounds. So I have to be ready. So this might be a little temporary. Um, I have enough room here for the mailman to turn around and usually if anybody comes here with a trailer to deliver something or if they come for hay, I have them basically pull up and then back into here. I think I have enough room yet for them to be able to turn around and that's less grass I have to mow. So, <laughs> Alright guys, I'll end the video there. Thank you guys for watching and uh, hopefully this uh, warm weather gets here and we can get spraying.